it's your brother Lenry Adinekon. We're coming to you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of our God. So, powered by the Pastor Lenry Adinekon Center for Inspiration. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gems on upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on how to conquer suicidal feelings, coming from Job 3 chapters, 6 to 8, just nuggets from there, you know, and uh, let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we bless your name. God, give you praise. Thank you for the things you are bringing out of this uh, book in nuggets here and there. We ask oh God that as we do this again today, your spirit will help us as always. Thank you. In Jesus' His holy name we ask. Amen. All right. Job. Um, we have said that we are just uh, doing these things in nuggets here and there. Um, not necessarily the whole thing line by line, you know, and all that. So let's quickly do Job. I'm not going to... Um, read everything because of time because I'm looking at three chapters here so we are looking at uh, uh, Job 6 from 4 the arrows of the Almighty are within me it, it, my spirit drinks in their poison the terrors of God are arrayed against me um, you know things like that and then in chapter 7 he goes on uh, saying similar things uh, um um, where is it now? Yeah, what is man that you should exalt him, you know, uh, and all the rest of it. Anyway, this is where we are going. As far as Job was concerned, Job felt everything was from God. And so he said, oh, the arrows of God are this, and then he said, oh, what, what am I? I'm such a small person. Why, why clean a fly with a sledgehammer, you know, and things like that. And so he felt everything was from God. And um, even his friends also felt that way and you know these things tell us some things or show us some things that this kind of thing is still going on now some people have a way of believing that whether it's bad or good everything comes from God there's some popular religions that's what they believe that uh, whether it is good or bad you know everything comes from God whereas we know from what we have read in this book which is the big lesson of this book that some of these things that Satan is somewhere in the equation and unless you put every factor that you need to put in the equation, you cannot balance that equation properly. You know the way we balance equations in mathematics and chemistry and things like that? If you don't factor in, or if you don't put in all necessary factors, you cannot get a balanced thing. And that was the problem with Job here. He felt all the pain, all the pressures. He called them the arrows of the Almighty. He felt God was hitting him with, you know, killing a fly with his leg hammer. Why all this? I'm so small, you know, and all that. He thought everything was from God. But we know from what we read here that God has shown at the beginning of this particular book that actually it was the devil. And I'm saying that to somebody that some of these things, they are not God. They are just, it's just the devil. At times, Satan even makes them look as if God is punishing you for some sin. It's still part of his schemes, you know, to deceive you and think some of the things he is the one behind that they're actually from God. All right. So let's look at some other things. Uh, it says something here. Oh, that I might have, in verse 8 of chapter 6, Oh, that I might have, I might have my request that God will grant me the thing I long for, that, it would, that God would please just crush me and you would lose his hands and cut me off. Then, I, you know, my anguish will be over, you know, and all that. What other strength do I have? Just why are you prolonging my life? Just end it. That's uh, like um, verses 9 to 11, you know, and... Um, Okay, so he, he was feeling suicidal. Now that happens when things really overwhelm us, when uh, one feels all drowned in problems, when um, um, depression, these things can lead to depression. And depression is what leads to suicidal tendencies. When you think, look, it's all too much, I can't win. I can't win this thing. It, it's, so, it's so overwhelming. It's so drowning. I can as well just end everything. That was the way Job was feeling. He was feeling suicidal. And it happens to people. Especially the kind of times in which we are. When everything is so bad. When your nation is being declared one of the worst places to live. One of the, you know, and things like that. And you are in the midst of all of it, you know, like that. It can make one to be depressed. To be totally, totally um, depressed and depression will lead to this suicidal thoughts. That's what happened uh, to Job here. And we are looking at how to overcome this kind of a thing. That's something I'm happy about Job. Job didn't keep quiet about it. 
he was saying it. If, if you look at chapter 7 again, uh, verse 11, it says, Therefore I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Yeah. So he didn't keep quiet about it. He was talking about it. <clears throat> and that's the first thing about how to conquer this thing. Don't keep quiet about it. You are feeling so depressed. Don't keep quiet about it. Tell somebody, share with somebody, this is the way I'm feeling. Now, if that person knows what to do, that person may be able to guide you into seeing a therapist. It's good for you to see some therapists. Some people are what I call mind and emotion doctors. If you call them some other names, some people may attach some stigma to it. But there are certain doctors, they are trained in the area of your mind and your emotions. And they are able to help you in those areas. Therefore, do not keep quiet. <clears throat> First of all, because okay, before I go on to the, the doctors, this keeping quiet is Satan's biggest strategy. Don't tell anybody. Just bottle it up. Keep it to yourself. I mean, this is so shameful. Don't tell anybody. That kind of a thing. That's what Satan does. And he's the one behind the problem in the first instance. And then he's the one asking you not to tell anybody. So tell somebody. Share with somebody. Praise God. Do not allow that Satan's strategy, that old trick of making you keep quiet. Don't expose your shame. It's not every, every uh, garment you wash in the public. You know, that's what Satan does. Tell somebody. And I hope that person would uh, guide you to the next thing. Seek therapy. Do not uh, try to faith it. You know, that kind of a sick therapy. God has brought doctors our ways. And there are some special doctors. I call them mind and emotion doctors. They are trained in that way. And they are able to help you come out of that whole thing. Seek therapy. Seek help. All right? And, um, of course, you add prayers to it. And then you read the word of God. And use the word of God to encourage yourself. You know, all those things. So, as you do the spiritual aspect, also do that other secular aspect with people who are trained in this particular direction so that they can help you. There are people who have overcome depressions, who have come to testify how they were feeling so suicidal, you know, and things like that. I'm talking about, as I'm talking now, that somebody I remember, she's gone home to be with the Lord now. She actually attempted, openly attempted to kill herself. At the end of the day, she was found that she was found to be pregnant and came out with two fantastic identical twins, you know, that people know all over the world today. Supposing she had, she, had, she had killed herself. Yeah, people have come out of it and she has lived many, 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 many years and testified of these things. And I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that with you. You also can get over it, but don't keep quiet. Praise God. Don't keep quiet. Share with somebody you can overcome this thing in Jesus' mighty name. Let's go on and say one or two more things. We say I have a lot to, to do. Um, so we have the popular passage in Job chapter 8 verse 7. Though your beginning was small, your latter end will increase abundantly. That's a beautiful promise for somebody to, to keep this morning. But that's not where it started. It actually started from around verse 5. If you will earnestly seek God, make your supplication to the Almighty. If you are pure and upright, though your beginning was small, that's it. So you see, that's not where the, pro that the promise is uh, predicated upon some other things. In other words, number one, if you pray, sorry, if you earnestly seek God, if you are prayerful, if you are pure and upright, then this promise will apply to you. Though your beginning was small, your latter end will increase abundantly. I say amen to it for myself and to somebody listening to me today in Jesus' mighty name. All right. And finally today, um, he went on and said something, something about the, uh, those who forget God. But the one I want to focus upon, it says the hope of the hypocrite shall perish. Yeah, I think we should talk about that uh, very quickly. The hope of the hypocrite shall perish. What is the hope of the hypocrite? Typically, the hope of the hypocrite is to actually address his own personal interests without you realizing it. When somebody is going on in his hypocritical ways, is actually personally or she's person trying to address his her own private personal interests without you realizing that what he's doing. That is why he's hypocritical about it. <clears throat> That's the hope of the hypocrite. The second hope of the hypocrite is to make you feel small, to make you feel inferior, to make you feel um, sorry. Yeah, deliberately. So that when you feel inferior, when you feel smaller, when you feel sorry, it makes, it makes him feel better in himself. Those are, those are, that is the hope of the hypocrite. Number one, to address his own interest without you realizing it, without you knowing that that's really where he's going. Number two, to make you feel guilty or to make you feel inferior, make you feel sorry, make you feel smaller. In all that way, somehow, 
it makes him, you know, happy with himself and, you know, makes him feel a little bit bigger than he really is. That is the hope of the hypocrite. And the Bible says the hope of the hypocrite shall perish. And I agree. I agree. <laughs> Praise God. You ought, not, you ought not to allow anybody to feel smaller for any reason. The hope of the hypocrite shall perish. That's where we're going to stop here today. Uh, it's uh, very interesting in the book of Job, but you see, like we did with the revelations, I'm going to just take nuggets here and there, you know, right through until we are done with this particular book. So thank you very much for sharing time with us this morning. We really appreciate appreciate you and trust you're going to have a fantastic time today at work in the meantime please if you help us to grow this channel to the best of your ability and if you are new here please subscribe and also press that notification bell so that when a post come up you can be notified thank you and god bless you